ओके हेड्स फॉर फोर जी टेल्स फॉर फाइव जी Okay, so today we have a very different phone with us. It is unlike any of the phones coming out this year. We have the Moto G72, and I really like the phone. It checks almost all the boxes for a good budget phone. Like it has a 120 hertz PE OLED display with 1300 nits peak brightness, in-display fingerprint scanner, 108 megapixel main camera, stereo speakers, very slim bezels, all that. At a price of eighteen triple nine, and with bank offers and exchanges, you can get it as low as fourteen triple nine. Well, well, well. There is one thing very odd about this phone. So this is Pratik. You're already watching TechWiser. Let's go. Okay. So first up, you get this box. Inside, you get the phone. You get some paperwork. You get a thirty-three watt charger, Type A to Type C cable, and lastly, you get a budget SIM ejector tool. And the first thing that you will notice is when you hold the phone. How light it is! Like it is very light. Here, let me show you. Here, if you can see, it only weighs 166 grams, and it is quite slim at 7.99 mm. And the in-hand feel of the device is really good. However, it is slightly more than a one-handed phone. You get a PMMA acrylic back. Well, PMMA acrylic glass is technically better than plastic since it doesn't scratch as easily as plastic, nor does it break. So that's a plus point. You also get a plastic frame. Also, the display has Corning Gorilla Glass 3 protection. Now you get the volume rockers and power buttons on the right side. And yes, you can reach them easily with one hand. And on the left, you have the SIM tray. It is a hybrid SIM card slot, meaning. Two SIM cards or one SIM and a micro SD card. And in the bottom, you have the Type C port, speaker grill, and a flagship feature, the headphone jack. Overall, I would say the device feels very light in hand. And oh, almost forgot. This has an IP52 rating, so it can survive small splashes of water too. Coming to the display, well, you get a 10-bit 6.6-inch PE OLED display. It has a 120 Hz refresh rate. Now, in simple words, a 10-bit display gives you 64 times more color than a normal AMOLED display. In case you want to know more, here's a very good video. And the display. The quality is really good. Like watching movies on the display is a delight. Like see here, yeah, I've been binging Delhi Crimes on it. The picture quality is really good. Also, it has Wideband L1 certification, so you can watch movies in full HD on Netflix, Amazon Prime, and other OTT apps. And it is quite bright too. As you can see outside, it is clearly visible. It has a peak brightness of 1300 nits. Usually, phones in and around the 30,000 price segment give you 1300 nits brightness. The overall display quality is very nice for the price. It has excellent viewing angles also. Like see here. Even if I tilt the display, there is no color shift or anything. But with this really good display, you get one odd thing. We'll talk about it in some time. And you also get an in-display fingerprint scanner. And if you follow Motorola phones, usually Motorola gives a side-mounted fingerprint scanner. So the in-display one is quite accurate, fast, as you can see, like a normal in-display fingerprint scanner. And you get stereo speakers. It has Dolby Atmos support, like every other Motorola phone. So you can customize the sound as per your choice. Like, listen to this. like it's quite loud the sound quality is good and almost 60% of the sound is coming from the bottom speaker and the rest 40% from the top also very few companies give stereo speakers in this price range it is good to see that motorola in 2022 has started providing stereo speakers in all their budget phones now coming to the camera you get a 108 megapixel main sensor now we are here outside to test the camera and today we have sayan instead of manu take my photo <laughs> you got that <laughs> So right off the photos are sharp the 108 megapixel camera shows like look at this back photo the texture text everything is sharp now one interesting thing i noticed like if you look at the preview while you're taking a photo in the viewfinder it looks washed out but once you have taken the photo it processes it a bit and the hdr color sharpness all gets better and even we took some harsh photos against sunlight and it performed good like this one photo against sunlight looks really good like really good for the price also you get an 8 megapixel ultra wide angle plus depth camera which in good daylight conditions take decent photos but in low light just forget it and in videos you can shoot up to 1080p 60 fps but the stabilization is better at 1080p 30 fps and the video quality is okay like in this price range you get okayish video camera and of course of course you get a 2 megapixel macro camera and you get a 16 megapixel front selfie camera which can record up to 1080p 30 fps you can have an idea of the mic quality and in terms of selfie i felt that the dynamic range is good even the sharpness and all is good but the skin tone turns out a bit yellowish it's maybe because we are in golden hour but yeah 
Now coming to performance, this is a bit of a shocking part. Well, you get a MediaTek Helio G99 processor, which is new, along with 6GB LPDDR4X RAM and 128GB UMCP storage, which is equivalent to UFS 2.2. But Helio G99 is a 4G processor. Now, if you would have noticed during this entire 2021 to 2022, there are just one to two 4G processor launched and everything else was 5G. So a couple of questions will be, Pratik, should I buy a 4G phone now? When do you think I'll get 5G? I mean, you, when will you get 5G? See, we'll get to the answer in a moment. First of all, this is a good fast processor. Like in day-to-day -day usage, I didn't feel any lag whatsoever. And this MediaTek G99 is a new processor. So we wanted to see how it performs in Antutu. Now Antutu is a benchmarking app that checks overall performance of the phone. And if you see, it scores 3,71,000 something, which is better than Snapdragon 680 and closer to Snapdragon 695. But of course, you don't buy a phone to run benchmarks, you buy it to play games. So let's play some Apex legends and see how it performs now for graphics you get 40 fps at normal graphics and maybe since the chip is new the fps and game setting should unlock after a couple of months so for 40 fps the gameplay stays stable but i would only recommend it if you do casual gaming for half an hour one hour coming to software you get android 12 right out of the box and since this is a motorola device it is very very close to stock android there are no bloatwares or third party apps installed but surprisingly on the lock screen if you swipe left there is glance wallpaper like it asked me to enable it during setup but by default it is off which was quite odd anyways with android 12 you get all the new privacy features like for instance if a third party app like facebook asks for your location you have the option to give them an approximate location and not your exact location and you get the usual motorola gestures like this quick twist feature which can easily open the camera or this Karate chop to fast activate the torch feature. I must say this comes in pretty handy and I like this feature. You also have this three finger touch screenshot, quick and simple. Also you get ThinkShield security. Now in case you don't know, ThinkShield security is a software based security to encrypt your files and documents. And you get one year assured upgrade to Android 13 and three years of security update. Coming to the battery, you get a 5000 mAh battery which should easily last you a day. You can also fast charge it at 33 watts so it can go 100% in like one hour 45 minutes. Coming to the sensor, you get all the necessary sensors and remember in the beginning of the video i said there was something odd about this phone and that was 4g and now you would be like pratik why a 4g phone well see smartphone manufacturers in order to give 5g on budget compromise on certain features so motorola took a bold move and didn't compromise on most of the features but at the cost of not giving 5g and since this is a 4g phone you get 4g plus carrier aggregation i tested it both airtel and geo sim even call quality and everything is pretty up to the mark. I didn't face any issue. And with that out, let's talk about 5G. In my personal opinion, you will start seeing 5G in metropolitan or important cities like in the first half of 2023 or by the end of it. If you think you aren't going to be the first user of 5G or if you live in a non-metro city or you're looking for a good budget camera and display phone for yourself, you can consider the Moto G72. It starts at 18999. You get really good slim bezel display, stereo speakers. There's also an introductory offer of 3000 exchange on your old smartphone and 1000 off on selected banks, which further brings down the price to 14999. And at that price, it's a good phone. But at the original price of 18999, you can consider Moto G82 5G or Moto H20 Fusion. Those are both 5G phone and a good phone. On that note, this is Pradeek signing off. See you in the next video.